When I first came here, I came with a, on a British passport, not a Jamaican passport, because mm. Jamaica had no passport. I manage the learning and engagement program here at Black Cultural Archives, the UK's only heritage centre dedicated solely to collecting the history of people of African and Caribbean descent in the UK. Our exhibition, Windrush 75, will focus on children of the Windrush. That has given its name to a whole generation of people that came between 1948 and 1962. Our own founder, Len Garrison, came here as an 11-year-old boy and we really want to make sure their stories are told. The aim of the founders was to have an archive and museum to represent African and Caribbean people in Britain. They were told at the time by many that you won't be able to find any objects relating to African history, you won't find any art or artifacts, and Len was like, oh, yes I will, and I, it's my mission to go out and find these things and collect and preserve them, otherwise they will be lost. The Windrush became sort of the symbol of post-war migration from the Caribbean. And that's also because it caught the attention of the media and it was being debated in, in Parliament as to whether we really want these people here. We never thought of ourselves as foreigners until we got here. Even the Caribbean, the British Caribbean to come to Britain was simply going from one home state to another. It, it wasn't travelling to a foreign country. Thinking about the story of the Windrush, I've got out a few objects that relate to it. Uh, one of them is this little booklet here called Your Neighbour from the West Indies. While there was a lot of resentment to people coming from the Caribbean, there were also organisations like this that were very keen to encourage British people to welcome people from the West Indies. When I first came here, I came with a, on a British passport, not a Jamaican passport. Mm because Jamaica had no passport. This booklet here, 500 Jamaicans, by Sam King, who was himself a Windrush passenger, is talking about being on the ship and what it was like. But he also mentions that the hurricane in 1944 destroyed most of the coconut, banana, pimento and coffee plantations. So for a lot of people, they would have thought, well, rather than start again, let me go somewhere else and see what it's like. A number of them had signed up during World War II, largely in the RAF. They generally said that they had a very good experience, they were well respected, they were welcomed and people were very grateful for their service. So that was the reason that some of them felt to come back in civilian times because it had been so welcoming before. So this here that I'm holding is the thesis that was written by our founder Len Garrison and in it he interviewed some of the veterans who really talk about their bitterness and disappointment in that they realised that, that really it wasn't them, it was the uniform that had been respected before. There's one gentleman here who said, being without uniform, you were an outsider. It didn't make any difference that you fought for the country during the war. A while before, they were hugging you, kissing you, patting you on the back. After the war, you were nothing. We know that a lot of people came to work in the trains and in the buses. And he also mentions in here that were it not for these Commonwealth crews, the entire system would have collapsed because there just weren't enough people. This object here, so the conductor presses, we turn it round. It's a Gibson ticket machine. The cheapest journey was one pence, or one D, right up to 11 pence, or a shilling, two, three, or four shillings. This is a very, very old and rusty steel pan made by the mighty Sparrow, who is a legend in the Calypso world. Calypso music, on the one hand, it's celebratory. I mean, for me, Calypso was what was always played at family weddings, and everybody would get up and dance. But the music is revolutionary. They were always it was a way in which they were able to really speak freely politically without getting into trouble. 2,000 people turned up to the opening of Black Cultural Archives, which I think really answers the question as to what it meant to the community to have this space here, a place for researchers to come and research the material, but also for other people who just want to socialise, to feel that this is kind of the hub of their history. It's nice to know that the contribution of the Caribbean people have been recognised, not just for our appreciation, but for the generation that's coming up afterwards.